Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to discuss with you my three favorite genes involved in boa morph projects. I think these three genes are all really uh, impressive as a single gene morph. And then when you combine them with other genes, there's a huge number of untapped possibilities. I'm going to tell you why I'm so excited about each of these three genes. And I'll also show you some examples of some of the animals carrying the genes. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So first of all, I just wanted to say that although I have a few more projects, I'm still primarily a locality breeder. I would say that I'm probably about 90% localities and 10% morph projects. Relatively recently, I decided to try uh, some morph projects and in a future video I'll probably tell you some of the reasons why I made that choice and of the projects I've looked at I think these three genes are to me the most exciting and they have the most potential uh, to work with in the near future. The first gene that is really I'm really excited about is the VPI T positive albino. And so VPI stands for Vita Preciosa International, which is a uh, python and boa breeding operation run by the legendary herpeticulturalists Dave and Tracy Barker, and they're the ones who founded this particular morph. And this is a terosinase positive albino, or T positive. And so how that differs from the terosinase negative albinos, like the call and the sharp, is that they retain some dark pigment. So terosinase is an enzyme that's involved in the biosynthesis of the dark pigment melanin. And because these animals retain that enzyme, they have a little bit of production of melanin. So rather than having the orange and white colors of the T negative albinos, they have this beautiful golden caramel color to them. One of the things I like about them is that they look a little more natural than the T negative albinos. So if you saw this animal, um, it, it would be obvious it was something special, but it wouldn't be so obvious as some kind of mutant. It almost looks a little bit more natural to me than the terosinase negative. Um, the colors actually will improve over time. So as they get bigger, they just retain this beautiful golden color that actually deepens a little bit, a little bit more of a deep golden color over time. Um, there's actually a number of different terosinase positive albinos out there, but I think the VPI T positive is the nicest looking. It seems to be the most popular as well. And so again, this is just a single gene morph. This guy only has the VPI T positive, no other genes. So as just a single gene morph, I think it's a you know spectacular animal. Um, but of course, there's also the potential to combine this with some of the other genes to make um, you know, more, a designer boa. So this is an example of a combo morph that's made using the VPIT positive as a base morph. This is called a VPIT positive junglo, or also known as a VPIT positive jungle sunglow. And so this animal is homozygous for the recessive VPIT positive gene. In addition, the animal carries one copy each of the incomplete dominant genes, jungle and hypo or hypomelanistic. And so with the incomplete dominant genes, one copy of the gene will give the animal a phenotype or the physical characteristics that are associated with the, that particular gene. And so when we add these three genes together, the effect of the hypo gene intensifies the color of the VPIT positive. You can see the saddles are this reddish orange in color. Um, the hypogene also has an effect on the shape of the saddles. Um, but when we look at the shape of the saddles, you can see the striping and this aberrancies of the shape of the saddles, which are primarily due to the jungle gene. That's one of the traits of the jungle gene. The other main um, contribution of the jungle gene here, we see this very clean dorsal surface with very few markings. And then if you look at the side of the animal, you can see this abrupt transition. It's actually a different color on um, its sides than the dorsal surface. So that's a trait that's 
due to the uh, incomplete dominant jungle gene. So um, the VPIT positive gene, when it first became available, it was very expensive. Um, since then, the price has come down quite a bit and it's now more affordable. You know, a typical boa keeper who doesn't want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars can afford a VPIT positive. But what I like about this, I don't think that it's going to drop that much lower. I think these are such beautiful animals to look at um, that they've kind of reached that price point at which um, people want them so badly that even if the supply is increasing, there are people are willing to pay a little bit of a premium for such a beautiful animal. So I'm really excited about the possibilities of the TPI, VPI T positive. So the next gene that I'm really excited about is called the Moran gene. And this uh, is an incomplete dominant form of pastel boa. So most, most pastel boas, we're talking about a polygenic trait. So you have multiple genes which contribute to the pastel color. But with the Moran gene, it's just one gene that gives them this pastel phenotype. So back in the mid 2000s, a German breeder bred together two pastel looking boas. And in the offspring, he saw three different phenotypes. There were normal boas, there were pastel boas, and there were th then there were these crazy red pastel boas that just had this, you know, really, really cool um, phenotype to them that, you know, unlike anything that had ever been seen before. And so we counted up the numbers and the ratios were roughly one to two to one. So one normal to two pastels to one of the crazy red boas. So about 50% pastels and 25% each normal and the crazy red boas. And these are the ratios that you would expect if you cross together two um, animals carrying one copy of an incomplete dominant gene. So then he did some more crosses with the next generation to demonstrate that it was indeed an incomplete dominant gene. Um, and as I mentioned, this is kind of cool because most pastels, you have multiple genes. And if you breed two together, you can intensify the pastel. If you breed one pastel to a wild type, you get less pastel. Um, but it's a different mode of inheritance. So the Moran gene, as far as I can tell, that's named after an Australian crawfish that has a, this, you know, bright red collar. Um, please, if you know, if you know differently, just correct me because I'm not sure that's the case. I just know Moran means is a type of Australian crawfish. Um, this particular animal is a Moran jungle. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a, just a straight Moran to show you what it looks like, but the effects of the Moran or to give it this beautiful pastel coloration. You can see the pinky orange colors to this animal. And it also cleans up the pattern quite a bit. So you can see how clean this animal looks, especially like the dorsal surface and the sides. The jungle gene also has an effect to clean up the pattern. So um, the effect of both of them, you can see is kind of um, synergistic here. Incidentally, of the jungle gene, you can also see the partial striping and the different shape to the saddles, as well as you can see how clean the tail is in this particular animal. So jungle and Moran together give this really beautiful, impressive looking animal. So here's another example of a Moran combo. This is a hypo Moran. This animal is both hypomelanistic as well as Moran. And so looking at its sides, you can see the beautiful pinkish colors uh, to the sides. This girl is about three years old, so she's developed quite nicely. Um, you know, the Moran gene gets more intense over time. The animals develop as they age. The hypo you can see causes these aberrancies in the shape of the saddle, as well as a lighter coloration. So together, they give this beautiful looking animal. And this particular animal is also 50% possible heterozygous for the call albino gene. Um, so I intend to cross this animal with a call albino male. And then if I'm lucky, she'll be het. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the Moran 
uh, sun glow boas that might result. So that would be a really cool combo morph. If she's not had, you know, at least I'll have some hets, which I can then cross with a call to get the Moran sun glow boas. The last gene that I'm super excited about is called the IMG or increasing melanin gene. And that describes what the gene does. So the animals start off relatively light as babies, but then which eat with each shed, they get more and more melanin dark pigment. And over time they get darker and darker until some of them end up almost this pure jet black. So another word for IMG or another um, term for this morph is called the Azabachi boa. Azabachi means jet black in Spanish. And the black is this beautiful, iridescent, shiny black. Um, really cool looking animal. And so what's cool about IMG is that there's a great deal of possible possibilities to combine it with other genes. So if you combine it with the anery or the motley gene, you can have an adult boa that's almost pure black. Um, this particular animal is a IMG hypo jungle. And you might think you have increasing melanin IMG and you have the hypo melanistic gene hypo, which seems kind of a paradox that you'd have one gene that increases the melanin, the other one reduces the melanin. But when you have both of them, you get this beautiful high contrast. So you can see this animal has these dark saddles and all these little specks of melanin coming in, especially on her sides. If you look at her um, face, you can see these beautiful dark markings on her face and snout. And this particular animal is only about nine months old. So as she grows up, the IMG effects will become more and more pronounced. So I'm really looking forward to watching this particular animal grow up. Um, this animal is actually also 66% positive or 66% possible het for the VPIT positive albino. So what I plan to do with her, unfortunately it's probably gonna be about four, at least four years until she's old enough. I wanna cross her with that VPIT positive male that I showed you in the beginning. And if she's het, that means I could get IMG VPI T positive jungle boas. And that's just a really cool looking animal. So something definitely for me to look forward to in the future. So it seems kind of crazy that you would combine IMG with an albino since of course IMG is increasing melanin gene and the different albinos are amelanistic, meaning no melanin. So it seems like wouldn't they just cancel each other out? Well, actually what happens is that when you have IMG in either a, v po uh, a T positive or T negative albino, the IMG gene really enhances the colors of the albino. It makes the reds redder, it makes the white whiter, and it enhances the contrast between the white background color and the reds or orange that are present in the saddle. So IMG is also a great gene that can be combined with different albino morphs. So I want to show you one more IMG animal that I'm growing up. So this is also a very young, uh, it's a 2019 animal, like the one I just showed you. But this one is an IMG hypoboa. Um, so looking at her coloration, you can see she's already a little bit darker than the animal I just showed you. So there's some variability in the IMG. Um, some of the animals get darker faster than others. You can see the hypogene gives her this beautiful uh, pinkish coloration to her sides. Um, there's just something that you can't really define it or put into words. I just think that the IMG and the hypo look really, really cool together. Um, so it's kind of a personal preference. You either like it or you don't. This particular animal is 100% heterozygous for the call albino. So I intend to cross her with my call albino male when she's old enough and hopefully produce some IMG uh, sun glow boas. So unfortunately that's probably gonna be about, you know, at least four years. So something definitely to look forward to in the future. If you're a locality boa enthusiast like me, 
You probably are familiar with the beautiful boa constrictor longicata or the long-tailed boa from Peru. And these are animals that have this natural um, darkening going on. They start out lighter and then over time they get darker and darker. So it's kind of cool that the IMG um, that's being used in these morph boas looks similar to what's happening in these wild um, boa constrictor longicata. Although it appears that in most IMG boas, we're, we're seeing a faster increase of the melanin pigment and this faster darkening of the boa, leading to a darker boa overall. Um, one thing I think that, the reason I like them so much is, as you probably know, I prefer the dirty look in my boas, like my true red tails. I like a lot of background color and splotches and freckles and, you know, these intersaddle markings. And you can see how much this girl has in terms of these beautiful markings between the saddles and freckles. It's just overall a very dirty look, which I think I prefer to the super clean boas that a lot of people are breeding. So those are three of the genes that I'm working with that I'm super excited about the possibilities. It's probably going to be at least two years or so before any of these snakes are old enough to pair up. But I'm really looking forward to watching them grow um, and develop, as well as anticipating the possible babies that might come out of some of these pairings. So I thank you for your attention. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below or feel free to reach out to me. Um, I hope this was helpful, not just for the morph people, but I know, as I mentioned, I'm primarily a locality guy. And I know a lot of locality people really don't like morphs and vice versa. Hopefully some of you guys may think a little bit differently after watching this video. Uh, thank you and enjoy your boas.